What did your research show about how glyphosate has become so toxic in our environment and in our lives? Right. That's the thing that actually was puzzling me when we started to look at it and we saw all these correlations. Nancy Swanson and I were having a lot of fun rummaging through U.S. databases on health, various diseases and finding ones that correlated perfectly with the rise in glyphosate. It's been a tremendous increase in the usage of glyphosate over the past two decades. And at the same time, there's been a tremendous increase in the prevalence of a whole bunch of nasty diseases like diabetes and obesity and Alzheimer's and autism. I could go on and on, some cancers. And so, um, you know, correlation doesn't mean causation. People scream that at us, but we're like, wait a minute, all these things are perfectly correlated with glyphosate. Wouldn't the easiest answer be that glyphosate is causing the increase? I think it's the simplest answer. Oxen's raisin, razor. So, you know, we... I needed to find out how could a single chemical be so toxic? You know, it was puzzling even to me. It's like, how can it happen? That's what people argued back. It can't be true because it's, it's just not possible that one chemical could be so toxic. But it actually is possible if, in fact, glyphosate does what I think it does. And it makes sense that it does that because it exactly fits the, the story for the enzyme that it famously disrupts in the plants. And that they've all said this is how it kills the plant. It disrupts this particular enzyme. And I have this notion of a glyphosate susceptibility motif that that enzyme fits to a T. So it, it explains what happens with that enzyme in association with glyphosate. And it then allows you to argue that the same thing is happening to a lot of other proteins, a lot of other enzymes and other proteins that are causing them also to be disrupted. And that's how you can explain all these diseases, just the specific proteins that are susceptible to glyphosate toxicity. When you take those down, you cause these diseases. And so I've had a lovely time connecting the puzzle pieces among all the different aspects of the story. It was really, it's, I love a puzzle, and this is really a, a mega puzzle, so I'm still working on the puzzle, but it's just amazing how well it works if you say this is what glyphosate does. And so what it does, it is a glycine molecule. It is an uh, amino acid. Glyphosate is an amino acid, and it's an amino acid analog of glycine. And glycine is, the, uh, is a very important amino acid that's just the building blocks of proteins. This is the famous DNA code that allows the proteins to be assembled by hooking up amino acids like beads on a string. That's the whole basis of life with the DNA code. When the code sees uh, a code for glycine, it knows how to hook glycine into this little socket that it fits the, the enzyme that matches glycine. Has this Glycine's the tiniest amino acid, so it has this nice, you know, tight uh, fit for glycine such that no other amino acid can fit because they've all got side chains and they're going to get in the way. Glyphosate doesn't have a side chain. It's just like glycine. So it fits perfectly in that socket. It has a side chain on its nitrogen axis, Adam, but that doesn't matter because the nitrogen is outside of that of that snug fit. It's sitting outside because it has to hook up like the paper dolls. It has to join the paper dolls. So the nitrogen is not inside that, that match. Glyphosate fits into the enzyme and then it gets confused and puts glyphosate in instead of glycine. And especially in situations where there's room for that methylphosphonate unit that's sticking off the nitrogen atom. And that can happen if there's small amino acids on both sides. And in fact, uh, proteins that bind phosphate require um, space for the phosphate they, from the substrate. There's a substrate that contains phosphate. Methylphosphonate looks a whole lot like phosphate. So it'll fit in that same spot, which was supposed to be where the substrate would go. Once you put the phosphate, the methylphosphonate into the slot, the substrate can't fit, and now the enzyme's dead in the water. And you get massive suppression of the enzyme if you do that. And there are many enzymes that I, I've studied all these enzymes, and you can find enzymes where there's a glycine that's highly conserved at the active site, and that it binds phosphate. And then you can find what happens if it's not glycine, if you put something else there. It has a severe effect on that, on that enzyme. It has to have that tiny glycine molecule to work well. And so when you put that extra stuff that's on the nitrogen atom of glyphosate, it totally messes it up. So I can predict that's going to happen for a number of different really important enzymes in human metabolism. And many of them have been shown experimentally to be suppressed by glyphosate. So the whole package kind of fits together very nicely. The enzyme that it um, famously disrupts is called EPSP synthase. And that's an enzyme in the shikimate pathway. Our cells don't have that entire pathway. That's why they argue it's safe for humans because we don't even have that enzyme. We don't have that pathway. It can't affect our cells. That's what they use for that particular enzyme. But the problem is many of our gut microbes have that enzyme, use that enzyme to make essential uh, products that our cells can't make. So we depend upon our microbes to supply us with these nutrients that are absolutely essential. 
And when our microbes get affected by glyphosate, then that's going to uh, mess up our supply of those critical nutrients. So that's how that one enzyme can cause trouble. But it's much more than that enzyme because we also have enzymes, even that bind PEP. We have a highly conserved enzyme that binds the same substrate at an active site where it also has actually more than one glycine highly conserved. So that enzyme should also be uh, susceptible to glyphosate to the same argument. And then you can find all kinds of other enzymes that bind important uh, phosphate containing molecules and that will be messed up if glyphosate substitutes. So that's sort of how I played the game and then to find exactly which enzymes would I expect and then are there in fact diseases that are caused by defects in those enzymes and are those diseases going up dramatically and all of that fits together very nicely.